don't care who you are, what you did, what you wear, where you go. As long as you love me, Mothman. Welcome to the Fallout Lorecast. You will understand that joke if you were here for the pre-show at twitch.tv slash robots radio, where I am hanging out. Uh, before the actual co- recording with Laney, my regular co-host. Laney, how's it going? It's going good. Good, good. Like and, uh, always. <laughs> I guess I should say my name, too. I'm uh, Tom of Robots, as usual. And our special guest for today's show about the Mothman, our cryptid expert knowledge extraordinaire i don't know what should we call you dave dave chaffins from the fallout hub and other shows like the geography arcade dave how's it going i would call myself a a professional i'm a professional professional um, a cryptid professional a professional no no no, i'm just (laughs) professionally into mothman it's, it's become it's become something like you have amateur right and then you this is, this is golf terms you have amateur and then you have pro am but once you get to that professional level i'm like the tiger woods of mothman well i don't know about that because he has like a bunch of shit i'm like still <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Phil> <laughs> Of Mothman. <laughs> Put me in an arthritis commercial. We're only going to use golf references from decades ago about yes. awesome golf players from, you know, Fuzzy Zeller. You're the Fuzzy Zeller of cryptid fans. Um, so anyway, <laughs> welcome back to our uh, Fallout Lorecast. This is, uh, we're recording an hour earlier in order to make sure that Dave can get on here because as Lainey and I have been going through cryptids, uh, I was mentioning that to Dave and Dave was like, WTF, why aren't I on your show? And I was like, because, and he was like, because why? And I'm like, I don't know. You want to be on my show? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. So, um, so he's here. And uh, we are talking about the Mothman today, and Dave's going to give us some background on real world stuff. And then later on in the show, at the end of the uh, uh, second half of the episode, we're going to talk about Fallout 76 and the Mothman showing up in game. So awesome stuff. Also, right here at the beginning of the show, guys, if you haven't seen, I've been hinting for the last week and a half, maybe two weeks. Uh, send us some cryptid messages out. Um, some people decrypted some of those messages, though, and started really speculating about what was going on. Turns out that Dave and I are starting the Starfield lore cast tomorrow night. And so if this is out in the morning and you're on Patreon, maybe you'll hear this before. But if you're a regular listener, it'll be too late. But you may see the notification on twitch.tv slash robots radio that we are doing the Starfield lore cast tomorrow night, Tuesday night, 8 p.m., Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, and it's going to be awesome. Dave, we're going to be extremely speculating, dangerously speculating, ridiculously thing. speculating about Starfield. I think we're going to start, it's going to, okay, we're going to start on a nice, even level. We're going to have some, some like 101 basics. By the end of it, we're going to be so deep in the pit. <laughs> that we won't even know what our own like we won't remember our names we'll just be so deep into the we'll be the lost in space lore. lost in space we'll be lost in space yes. um yes and yes. we will be screaming danger will robinson at the amount mm-hmm. of speculation mm-hmm. and absolute craziness mm-hmm. um i heard that there's going to be a cult i heard that there is going to be some like detective bs like yeah. Just go listen to it. I, all I have to say about that is nanu nanu. So we will be doing that tomorrow night. And if you uh, if you don't get this message before you're able to tune in, be aware that this will be a regular feed. So you'll be able to look this up on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever you're listening to your podcast on. So you will definitely be able to hear it again later. And the video version will be up at the Robots Radio YouTube channel. So you'll be able to check it out no matter what. So don't worry. Don't just just relax, guys. Just chill it a little bit. You know. So. Let's get into the Mothman. Everybody has seen or hasn't seen the Mothman movie, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, those are the only two options. Either you've seen it or you haven't. I mean, you could could kind of seen it a little bit. About to blow your freaking mind right now. What if I told you there's more than one Mothman movie? What? There's more than Whoa. one? Well, oh, yeah. Well, then, mm-hmm. I mean, if there's more than one, then it definitely can't be based off of like a book, right? Okay. Well, it's not. Uh, well, okay. So the name of the movie is Mothman Prophecies. Um, 
and it started the beautiful and 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 just snack of a guy, Richard Gear. Snack. I mean, yeah. that guy is like, yeah, he is he is he is the snack. I mean, watch yeah. Knights at Rodanthe. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's if like I was a, a vampire, I would definitely chew on his chest. Oh yeah, he would be he would be something. Um, it is loosely based on some events within the book. Um. I, I, I today I, I brought a few props with me. My first happens to be the Bible itself. Uh, this is the Mothman prophecies that I hold in my that, hand. That is here. your Bible. This is my Bible. Yeah, no, um, like, this let's, is let, yeah, let's let's just be clear to anybody who is of the Christian faith. You are not you're not desecrating an actual Bible with your Mothman. No, with your Mothman like hands, you are holding up no. the Mothman prophecies as your Bible, being that you are a worshiper of the Mothman. <laughs> Yes, this is for the goofs and the gags. Um, mm -hmm. This is not. Uh, th let me tell you about. Let me tell you a, a, a quick review of this book. Um, don't. It's really. It's really crazy because what this guy John Keel wrote about in here was a series of details. Uh, so I kind of want to get into those details. Tell us. Uh, tell us. My ears just are ready. starting with the with the first story, mm -hmm. and the first story comes from. I believe it was 1968, and I'm doing this all off memory. I didn't even look up anything before. Awesome. Just so you know how awesome. professional it is. 1968 was the year. Um, it was, I think it was in November. Uh, it was in the teens of November. There was this uh, young married couple. Um, they were out with another young married couple. Some would say it's it a It was 1966. Date. 66. <laughs> That's a lot further 66. from that's a lot further from the seventies than sixty eight. That's like that's twice true. as far from the seventies. But it was in November um, when this occurred. Uh, what had ha what had happened was there was two, two married couples um, that were out driving in their car, and I don't know if you've ever lived in West Virginia, but oftentimes, especially there was not a lot to do. Uh, so going on drives and just like going and looking at nature, uh, as we call it, nature, L uh, is a great option to go and leaf peep. And I had a yeah. leaf peeping trip recently. Um, he did going out there and looking at stuff is 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 common pastime. So they're out driving at night, and there's this area in uh, in Point Pleasant, West Virginia, was this big uh, provider of, of munitions and chemicals and a number of different uh, resources uh, for the American Army during World War II, mm -hmm. and so they had this old. Old, uh, depot that they called the TNT area. And what that was was essentially storage for a bunch of the gunpowder, dynamite, explosives, Explodies. chemicals that the army had. Yeah. Explodies. TNT, um, dynamite. And it was pretty out there. And so it had enough roads so you could get to that place, but not necessarily like hang your, like it wasn't lived in or anything so it was a good place to drive your car and look at nature so while they were out one night or um, hide a body all of a sudden above there or hide a body that's true um all of a sudden above their head as they are driving they see a pair of glowing red eyes and they start driving and they're like i think these glowing red eyes are following us so they drive faster and all of a sudden they see what they think is a, some sort of like creature with wings with glowing red eyes, flying at the exact same speed that their car is. They go from the TNT area, race all the way back to Point Pleasant, and that's like a, I guess like a, a 10 minute drive if you're going 60 miles per hour doing a country road. I mean, mm -hmm. this is back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were like, probably drunk were too. In prob I prob mean, probably. they probably had a few glasses of wine as well. Because prob uh, back, back then in the 60s, they were the, like laws didn't exist yet, you know, like mm -hmm. nobody knew about a, laws. A little, a little, uh, I guess a little point when they were driving, they saw this also, they saw this like dog and they thought about stopping and trying to like get it away, but it ran off huh. before they could get to it. Huh. Um, so they raced in their car all the way back being chased by this monster. This monster in their, in their record was going the exact same speed that their car was. Like it was flying above them going the exact same, like tailing them. And by the time they got the, back to town, they didn't see the monster, but they went and told the sheriff and said, Hey, um, hmm. there's this thing out in the woods. It's a creature. It's a bird. It's something. And we're going to go, uh, we got to have, uh, have you go investigate that. And so the police get I together time and again, go. I'm pretty yeah. sure I might be mistaken. I think that they went home and then they ended up going both couples. They went back a second time because they wanted to verify what they were looking at. 
and they believe that they saw it again like in the field before they went to the sheriff which actually makes it a little bit more believable if that mm-hmm. is the story i know that they went back i know that they went back again um because i think that they i think that they grabbed the sheriff and went back again again mm-hmm. let me tell you something about this account there is many different tellings of this account and the people in the town that live through it will tell you many different tellings about this account <laughs> mm-hmm. do they all believe every single account yes they do from the people that live mm-hmm. in the town mm-hmm. um, yeah just so like they just back. like all the variations in the gospels they're all true they're all true um they went back but with 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 sheriff or without sheriff um saw it again saw the body of a dog Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. race back home. You know what else looks this like a dog? Work. You know what else looks like a body of a dog? A chupacabra. Like a Just saying. It, Just saying. We might have a double I mean, cryptid Tom, situation here. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot going on because let me take you back. If you're starting, if you're sitting at home, you're like, okay, I've heard the story. You know, I've I've heard the story about the these people but let me tell you something did you know that this wasn't the first sighting of mothman in west virginia during this time frame does it go back to the native americans i mean it kind of does but even all the best cryptids go back to the native americans right right all the best cryptids go back (laughs) to the native americans so so if we look into uh the canal valley which is where charleston is that's where i am right now um if you get on the interstate right up here near my house you can drive up at maybe 10 minutes. Um, there's a graveyard, and some people were digging a grave three nights before the Mothman made himself aware in Point Pleasant. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And they saw something. Uh-huh. A pair of glowing red eyes in the sky that quickly disappeared. Now, fast forward to those three days, same night <laughs> as, the, as the couple was driving about. In Salem, Virginia... Mm-hmm. Which is where I, right near I live, right where I lived uh, previously, uh, before moving to Charleston. It seems like there all these farmer. things are following you, Dave. There like, is a farmer in and the he past. Heard, Sorry, go on. In the past. Mm. Mm. Uh, this, I mean, that's a great idea. Dave is even the so. um, <laughs> the, the farmer essentially had this dog, and this dog started barking. And he was like, What is that? And so he goes out opens the door dog goes racing out of the house he looks around he goes out to his barn he sees a pair of glowing red eyes and then they disappear and he can't find his dog his dog is is lost Uh and so what do the the couple see that next later on that night they see a dog of the same description in the road that they pass by Uh and then found dead later on Uh uh-huh uh-huh so here's anyways if you put all the pieces together then the i mean the obvious thing to assume here is that the mothman and the dogs and the dog were best buddies and they decided Mm -hmm. to leave the farmer because the farmer was a jerk ass son of a bitch excuse my french there friends um and then while they were traveling there was an accident and the dog got hit by a car i mean that is probably the most reasonable assumption (laughs) I yeah, I like to imagine that Mothman is a um it's a being <laughs> Lenny's face is just like what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he needs some companionship and he was probably like, you know what? This dog, he's coming right towards me. This is my best friend now. <laughs> this is my best friend. Little did he know. Later on that night that these terrible people would <laughs> probably kill their dog. Ugh. Kill the Mothman's dog. Ugh. Whatever happened to the Mothman's dog? That's going to be my next um, issue of Batman that I'm writing. Whatever um, happened to the Mothman's dog? <laughs> whatever happened to the Mothman's and dog? And the court, the court um, of the owls will be involved. Also, we'll just we'll just bring in all sorts of yes. different also arseless bats, owls, <laughs> moths. Yeah. So this Mothman incident happened, and then it started this collections process of all of these people sharing accounts and this is where you have john keel who's the man uh, if you read right there at the top um if you're on the stream it says john a keel is it's, the writer of mothman prophecy it's weird, he was a prominent you can read it backwards you can let me tell you something I mean, your eyes are a powerful if tool, you were and i to believe read in every it, single one of you to be able to read this on the stream if you read it like because it's mirrored it, it looks like it says a knowledge leak but that's not what that yeah. actually says. Okay, okay, okay. But watch this. What if I 
<laughs> now it says Keats. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's not how mirrors work Dave. so the mothman prophecies <laughs> the mothman prophecies here let me tell you you want to know something interesting about the mothman prophecies mm-hmm. yes I do. not about mothman tell us about the prophecies no, it's not there's there's, there's, not about there's mothman. a little bit of mothman that's it's it. not about mothman yeah nothing it, 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 it truly mothman is only one single portion of this mm. i think that mothman is is, is a term so I, I guess the the real history of it is that there was this this couple that saw something in the papers the next day, and I've seen the paper. I've seen a, well, a, a copy of the paper. I, you know, I don't know where they keep the original files for the paper of the Point Pleasant um, Registered Herald uh, that says um, "couple sided creature dot 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 bird dot 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 something," which I think is a weird headline for bird a local paper. Something, right? Got it. Something. Yeah. Mysterious. Um. So that brought a lot of people. Um, to be like, okay, what exactly happened? And then I'm sure that Lainey has the dates pulled up. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Way to let you down. Essentially, a few, a few, a few weeks later, um, there's this terrible accident in Point Pleasant where the Silver Bridge, which I've driven over, um, and I can tell you it's, it's a lot better now. Um, Silver Bridge collapses and better. kills, a, 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 like a, it kills about sixty people. Um, no good after going over unfortunate and so a lot of people have said that they have saw that they they have seen mothman near the silver bridge um and there's some pictures um of mothman on the silver bridge or what people say is mothman on the silver bridge um that you can go and find and then once that happened that draw na- that drew national news to the area and then they all found out about this mothman incident and that's when you start having the cryptozoologist wasn't a thing back then but ufoologist um, which is what John Keel was, came down um, and started investigating. And came down from the spaceship? Drawing. Uh, there's, okay, okay, Tom. Okay. W- would you believe me if in the book this guy details a, a situation <laughs> in which a man covered in tinfoil comes down from a spaceship in front of the Point Pleasant Elementary School? Because yes, is that a it does thing? happen in the book. Is that a thing that in the book? Thing. That is a thing that I happens I was just in the making book. a joke, but that's, that's, I was, so if, if you guys haven't figured out yet, the things that I've been saying on this episode are kind of the most ridiculous things that just happened to cross my mind. That one I thought was ridiculous. Let's, let's go back to this. <laughs> but this book is the most ridiculous book that you will ever read if you ever get a chance to read it. Um, it man, it is infuriating because it is so ridiculous and doesn't keep anything. Nothing correct. straight. It's uh, just, yeah, yeah. It is a mess. Um, so John Keel comes to the comes to the area and starts um, cataloging a lot of this stuff. At the same time, there is an individual that comes to the community um, that is in an ill-fitting, ill-fitting suit, um, wears sunglasses, and speaks in a monotone voice that keeps on questioning the residents. So the residents are being questioned by these reporters, these it, UFOologists, it, all these different things. Was it things. Smokey Man from the X-Files? Uh, it was... Who's Smokey Man from the X-Files? Did you ever Did watch the, the X-Files? The Smoking Man. The Smoking Man. No. The sm- he's he's the like smoking he's the mysterious guy who throughout most of the early seasons shows up in situations where he's like in the background smoking or talking to somebody and then you know you only get little hints of what's going on. Okay, yes. The smoking man is based off of the character that they discover in this book. He's <laughs> based off of Injured Cold. Injured Cold is the original inspiration yeah. for a lot of things including I would guess the, the smoking, smoking man, man right? Uh, Right, G Man from uh, yep. uh, Half Life is yeah. uh, the inspiration. For- That's who the man in the ill fitting suit is, and he starts stalking people and uh, starts mm. showing up in people's bedrooms at night. Like, there are legitimate reports of a strange man in a suit showing up in um, one of the couple's bedrooms that was on the trip that was just watching them. That's weird. Um, yeah, they report that to the police. Um, like wait wait wait, wait. Making, how does how did wait, how does that go though? Like you roll over in the middle of the night, you look up and there's just like a dude standing there, and you're like, ah, get out of my bedroom, guy in the suit, and then he just like leaves out the front door, like. Apparently, so a lot of these things, and and if you go into the community, I would not recommend asking a whole lot about Mothman outside of going to the Mothman Museum because a lot of these people hold these stories as true. Um, the people that were involved have moved away because 
it was psychologically very hard for them to deal with this incident. They believe that it happened, but they have all these different reporters and all these different UFO all just coming after them. Um, so then their story gets a little bit muddled just in in time. Um, most so most of the the family that it actually happened to has moved away, but. That is one of their reports that there was a man in a suit in the bedroom. Um, Crazy guy. So it goes back to maybe he just couldn't figure out where his bedroom was. Maybe he was just like trying all the doors. Just like, is this my house? Maybe he was just like, I bet these people are my friends, so I'm gonna go visit them. Yeah, maybe he was like, maybe he's the farmer who lost his dog, and he's just trying to find his dog in the middle of the night. I mean, maybe, yeah, but was is the farmer wearing a suit? I mean, let's I mean, bring in classes the farmer, in here. But well, here, like the farmer's going into town, right? So, mm-hmm. and he's showing mm-hmm. up at people's homes in the middle of the night. So the last thing you want to do is like show up as like, oh, I'm just a farmer. Like you put on a nice suit so you, like, you can like introduce yourselves. Hi there. I'm farmer lost dog guy. Seen my dog? Well... There is an account of Indrid Cold uh, a few days after the Mothman incident, uh, seen on the same highway that I was talking about in Canal Valley, where a guy pulls over in the road. And um, what do you think Indrid Cold drives? What, what do you think off the top of your head? What is that man in, a, in an ill-fitting suit that goes into people's bedrooms? What does he is drive? This, is this still the 60s? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Ill-fit, ill-fitting suit man... Go showing up in people's bedrooms probably drives a decommissioned postal service car. Laney, do you have any? Do you have any? <laughs> no. Any ideas? No. Pause. No. Laney. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, all of a sudden, this dude is driving his car, and he sees a floating sideways chimney that looks like it is emanating a light, like a lantern lands in the middle of the road, asks him how far the nearest town is, and then gets back in his floating chimney lamp and floats away. Later okay. on... Wait. This guy, this isn't a human. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. pretending to be a human. Is this a TARDIS? <laughs> is this a... <laughs> like... <laughs> Later on, this guy that, that had this encounter with this floating chimney man in the ill-fitting suit uh, says that he was telepathically then engaged with um, the chimney man. Of course he was. So it said that, that his name was Indrid Cold, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that he was from the Lanulos galaxy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there any other information on this telepathic engagement that they had? No. But people believe that Indrid Cold from the Lanulos galaxy... And wearing the ill-fitting suit, breaking into people's bedrooms, climbing your windows, snatching your people up, um, is an alien. Yeah, of course. I mean... That's why, if uh, you ever watch the Mothman Prophecies movie, it's not about Mothman. <laughs> it's about injured cold. It's about an alien in a suit. It's about Flying a chimney around. Mm-hmm. Showing up in people's bedrooms, wondering where his dog is. I added the last part. I like it. Um, so what the theory? You got piecing all this information. This is a lot of information. If you're just like starting out and you're like, well, what is a Mothman? I have given you so much. You're probably like, you're probably still like, like well, wait, but what is a Mothman? But, what, but wait, all I know is eyes and a missing dog. What is a Mothman? <laughs> Let me tell you, a Mothman is a prophetic creature that supposedly predicted the uh, collapse of the Silver Bridge uh, by flying into Point Pleasant. When people see him, people think that there is going to be impending doom up on that area. There have been other accounts in history of this happening, of this moth-like creature uh-huh. uh, showing up. Most recently, he has been seen in the Great Lakes um, area up in Chicago, as in like mm. a few years ago. Mm. You can actually go and they post up flyers uh, to be like, have you seen Mothman? I had a number that you could call and uh, you could call him. Uh, cool. He's, he's traveling. He's, he's in, traveling. He sees the air. I mean, he can fly. So right, I'm assuming. Who works on that telephone line? I want to work on that telephone I line. I think so anybody that telephone can, line... can do that. I think you just pay for a number <laughs> and have it forward to your cell phone. And then you can just, you can set up a, yeah. a call line for whatever you want. 
Yeah. <laughs> I think it ended up being like a public art project where people mm. put stories and different stuff um, based on whatever they had. Uh, so Mothman is, is this prophetic flying creature with glowing red eyes. What do people think it was? People think it was a heron. A red herring? I don't know. I, I, I no a heron, like a <laughs> like a bird. Ah, it, it was a bird. Uh -huh. um, the, the migratory yeah, like, patterns may have changed, and somebody saw so that's like the I guess and the eyes were reflecting the, the lights at the, night, and they were like, ah, uh, this scary is weird, eyes. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try it again because I think this might just be another like hearing different accounts thing. Because in mm -hmm. what I've heard, it's it's not a hair; it's a sandhill crane. Sandhill but like it's bird. it's another bird, right? And the idea is that like they have red around their eyes, and they have a mm. wingspan of like seven feet. And Mothman is supposed to be really tall. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but anyway, any bird really fits the bill. Like <laughs> bird, any bird, any large well, I mean, bird, so, yeah. Because birds are weird. Yeah. In the description, it probably is closer to an owl, which is I th if if uh, if you listen to uh, the the last cryptid episode of the Fall Lore class, which I listened to today on my run, mm. you can learn that uh, the Flatwoods monster may have also been an owl, a barn owl. Mm -hmm. Go back and listen to that episode. Yeah, um, two episodes ago. Yeah, yeah. I, two episodes you know, ago. Maybe all the cryptids so, are just owls. Wait, so are they the same thing? What if Mothman and the Flatwoods monster are just the same creature? An owl. There's some truth. An I owl? Mean, <laughs> there is some truth to... There is some truth to that. So uh, at this point... At this point, we're getting into some headcanon here. Um, the big prominent thing, and you'll see it with, um, I won't go into detail of, um, of, of Sheep Squatch, but the, the whole thing with Sheep Squatch is it, it is a product of the environment that it came from, and it came from the same environment the Mothman did, if you look up the things. Um, it, it, essentially, people believe that it smelled like sulfur whenever they were around the Sheep Squatch. Um, a lot of these different situations may have been a thing so much more like fallout people think that it's like a mutation because of all i mean the, the massive amount of of chemical processing in west virginia if you watch they just did a film about it um called dark water that had um mark ruffalo in it that mm -hmm. was talking about mm -hmm. essentially they were like pouring chemicals into the river and killing a bunch of livestock and then oh by the way that was also killing the people because that's the water that they were drinking um so Oops. As Homer Oops. Simpson would say. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, so there is a theory, there are theories that Mothman and Flatwoods Monster and, and the, I mean, chemical stuff was still being, I mean, right in the fifties. I mean, that was when it started to boom off and, and do stuff. I knew a guy that I, I knew a guy that, um, when I was taking a class in OSHA that was working on a, uh, experimental military chemical, uh, that was going to dis disintegrate, uh, male genitalia. Yeah, you mentioned this the other day on the Fallout Hub. I, I did. Um, yeah, that and sounds, I figured I can share that, that because disturbing. that was in a government OSHA class. That was in a government OSHA uh -huh. class that I just OSHA's. Um, I forgot the, the term. It's like be safe on your jobs kind of situation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, uh, Mothman, prophetic creature, bird, something. Indrid Cold seems like his mortal enemy. There's an, an alien that wears a suit and that is where you get a lot of these things like the smoking man also the men in black that is what john keel mm. um came up with is the men in black um there are also government agents that come into it but indrid cold is is considered the men in black as well and that's the same incident that happens interesting so, yeah isn't um isn't that book that's the first account anyone had of the men like he made that up right that's where it comes from the men in black the Men in Black, yeah, is the first account. He's the one that, that came up with, with that terminology. Um, and, and because the book the book goes on from Indrid Cold and, and and takes off I guess I guess on a path of more like let's look at the history of like strange men in suits and why they all could be Indrid Cold. <laughs> um, uh -huh. and it goes back to like diners and and these accounts of these different people and his other because this dude was traveling all over the united states and and parts of parts of europe just looking at ufo accounts strange accounts that kind of stuff and um, then he just started to notice and, that everywhere he went there were men wearing suits there must be wear, some reason like, why there's all these men wearing suits all over the place <laughs> 
and he i mean he would go into these office buildings and he would just look around at the men in suits and men he was like suits i keep on seeing these men in suits in these office buildings these men in, in suits? these rooms with giant tables either it's what the is same happening men who are following me around or for some reason men in different locations all seem to constantly be wearing suits what is going I, on what if what if, uh, like if everybody went to the, the homes of, of Americans now, they would be like, why is everyone wearing sweatpants? What? Why is everyone wearing sweatpants? What? What's the deal with everyone? Why wearing would everyone sweatpants? be wearing sweatpants? Or if you if you travel to lots of different aliens. farms, you'd be like, why does everyone have overalls? <laughs> what if what if this keen guy was just like, I mean, it sounds like he's either a very creative author or he's a bit off his rocker. What if he was just the kind of person <laughs> who um just didn't have the mental facilities to reason correctly at all <laughs> and was just like would, would draw connections between like there's got to be some sort of connection between all of these men wearing suits <laughs> other than like no that's just fashion <laughs> people wear suits you know like there must be right. some other reason for men wearing especially dark suits why do men wear dark suits and they're all over the place, especially at a distance? <laughs> anyway, so Akil Akil was a, a precarious sort. Um, I, w- I would encourage you to go if if not read Mothman prophecies. You're you're not going to make it through. You're I, I guarantee you you're going to pick up that ebook and you're going to make it maybe fifty pages in. You're going to be like, what's the point here? And you're going to be like, oh. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Mm. The better, the better theory out of, out of all of his theories, <laughs> and I'm talking about like the the elementary school with the tinfoil man coming down the UFO, and I think he was like, "My name's Herbert." I think that's literally what the dude said um, when he came down in it. The better theory uh, has yourself. to do with the uh, Native American tribes that mm-hmm. the, I think it was Cherokee that were up in that area. Essentially. They were trying. They had a fort. The um, the uh, I guess they weren't American. Re- they were I guess British. I guess they were American revolutionaries at that point. They had a fort up there at Point Pleasant. Um, and they were trying to broker peace with the local Native American tribes because they this. I mean, back then Point Pleasant was out in the frontier. I mean, it was like yeah, the Wild West back then. Like y- nobody lived out here. Nobody nobody did anything. Um, you, you literally only had forts where my where my house stood, like before i mean like in the 1700s there was a fort here um and davy crockett um no daniel boone daniel boone one that's of the one sure he was the sheriff of he was the sheriff of charleston really <laughs> which is stupid yeah he was that's yeah. awesome he, that's right. where he he was the sheriff of all right uh then he went and did all this other stuff uh anyways the uh the night they were trying to broker peace with the native americans these people in point pleasant and then <laughs> This general brings in the chief and his sons, and things go a little awry, and they may be captured. They're not sure. They're not being very nice to them. And then um, there is a problem, and the general kills the chief's son. And then that okay. sets everybody off, accordingly. It's yeah. a bit of a problem. <laughs> yeah. Right. So <laughs> the, the chief then utters onto him that he curses the ground and the people that live here. He sends out this like written curse. Um, and and mm-hmm. it's all conjecture. So I would read, read the curse that he said, but nobody, there wasn't a scribe in the corner that was like, Oh yeah. Can you repeat line two? I, w- I really need to write. What did you say in your curse? Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. K- kill the babies. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a hundred percent. Yeah. Th- th- that didn't happen, but there was a curse that he put up on the general. Um, so if you go to point pleasant, there is this obelisk in real life, this gigantic obelisk. that's not in the game, but if you go, you'll see it. It's like, it's like a, it's like a Washington monument obelisk uh-huh. that is erected for the uh, the Native American chief, and I have the name of the Native American chief here. I can <laughs> reference my book here. Uh, let's see his name. His name was Chief Cornstalk. That's it. And the Shawnee were the, were the um, Native Americans. Uh, chief Cornstalk. It is a monument to him. Um, 
and people believe, and that's the side of the fort that it was that uh, was on the riverbank. People believe that he has put a curse upon this land, and that's why the Silver Bridge fell. That's why the Mothman is there. That's why all of these weird things mm. over the course of time have happened in Point Pleasant. Mm-hmm. There's been multiple burnings, multiple crazy, strange, odd things that have happened there. Crazy, and strange, so odd I'm things. more yeah. Crazy, strange, odd things. I'm more inclined to believe that that may be something related to the mothman universe which is the official name of the mothman cinematic universe I mean, the mothman universe i mean if the options are aliens flying chimneys and showing up in people's bedrooms or native american curse i mean now tom you is need to be, either you, more you rational than on. the other mm. Well, I mean, Tom, you just got to be creative. You right, just, you're, right. you, you're so close-minded at the moment. Think about the chimney, my friend. Think, Think about the flying chimney. chimney. Think about the flying <laughs> chimney. Maybe the o- maybe the, the obelisk is is creating is is like a an, an antenna that is making the curse even more potent and channeling it directly from no, the ground. It's calling out to it's calling out to the aliens. Right. Maybe it's an yeah. antenna. Maybe the Mothman has antennas too, and so that's an antenna that is calling all of the Mothmen to the area, and that's connected. That's where the cult lives. In the obelisk. I mean, <laughs> what? Oh, you want to know? All right, you want to know something really weird? Yes. Yes. Do you know why they call him yes. Mothman? Why? Oh. <laughs> Does Lainey know? Say it. Because. <laughs> L- Laney, y- you take it away. No, let's hear I your don't, account. I don't Our accounts wrong. are lined up, okay. and we're at. We're <laughs> <laughs> so what I've heard is that. So I have a, okay a couple things, right? So one of them might be that okay. a journalist coined it because it was similar to Batman, which was the live action show was popular at the time. But also, I have a, a story that some boy looked out his window and saw a guy that looked like Batman on a roof just fly away. <laughs> so also that was considered a Mothman thing. But both of them would essentially mean that Mothman comes from Batman because Batman was popular at the time. I feel like injured cold just entered your room in some form of fashion. Um, <laughs> did you hear that? that I did hear that. Yes. It's yep, it's the men in black. They're here. Um yeah, the, the the account that I've heard is that the the journalist uh, was like, you know what's popular in 1966? Batman. Everyone watches Batman, so we're gonna call it Mothman because that's more fun than creature dot 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 bird dot 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 something something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have yeah. the name of his article was Bird Plane or Batman. <laughs> it says uh, Bird Plane or Batman, Mason Countyans hunt Mothman. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nekomata in Me. chat says 1960s clickbait. Basically, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the movie, the movie, the Mothman Prophecy, which is kind of what launched it into the 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 I guess the general like awareness. Media aspect yeah. Of it. Yeah. Right. Um, launched the town into a, a mainstream media and. They filmed some stuff from Point Pleasant. They were there on site doing research, but they've also had like some of the shots are from the actual hotel. And, and um, it's not if you look at the town um, in Mothman Prophecies, the movie, it's not Point Pleasant. Um, if you've ever been there, it's, it's it's different. It's I think it's a smaller area that's set in Pennsylvania. Mm. Um, but mm. it, it, it launched this whole thing about mothman and so they opened up this mothman museum that was like a non-profit thing they erected this mothman statue and it's totally gaudy like yeah no, you can find the mothman st- in um in the museum they have the written accounts of the first two couples that saw the mothman oh yeah they have they have those they have the written they have drawings their drawings of what they think the Mothman looks like. They have a lot of the original... They have a few things. There's three parts to the museum. One is the original accounts. Two, it's a movie It's a movie museum to Mothman Prophecy. So it's like, here's the phone that 
Indrid Cold called Richard Gear on, and <laughs> here's some shots from the set. Um, and then it's all of the paraphernalia that's been manufactured by Mothman. And let me tell you where Mothman is very popular, and that's in Japan. They have a of lot course. of, of course. Japanese toys. Of course it is. From Japan. That I, that are all some of them are labeled kaiju, which is kind of funny, because kaiju is like Godzilla. Right. And it's like, do they think that this is Mothman the, is like related to Mothra. I have the Mothman statue up on on stream right now for people to look at. That's it. Yeah. The uh, the Mothman statue. Let me let me walk you through. Okay. First of all, he has Mothman like Batman is, knees. He does. He has chest hair. <laughs> um, that's a very important. He has a six pack. And you know what he's got? He's got a donk. They went and they made a nice shiny metal donk for this <laughs> donk beautiful beautiful yeah donk you know like he got a donk she got a donk or like he thick you know cake back there <laughs> like a, a badonk got a badonk yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right, i'm trying to, i'm trying to find a picture of his badonk stay tuned Keep so, yeah it's very defined <laughs> mothman but I, I, I have a picture i have a picture of mothman's butt um i can pull it up on my phone and oh, and oh no no no, no. Uh, i found one with a woman who seems very interested in this oh here we go she's she looks excited all right yeah go ahead keep um, keep explaining i'm gonna put this on yeah on the video Mo- Mo- mothman mothman is great because he can clap them cheeks um he also has uh these wonderfully constructed wings um nice claws uh there's a picture i have a few pictures just of with mothman here that i uh have recently i believe saved to my phone um there she and is. just in in the mothman museum if you go to the mothman festival which is the yearly festival that they have in september this year was canceled you will wait in line for an hour to take the picture with the mothman statue i mean it is that's certainly that's crazy that's a lot of that's a it lot is of certainly around. something to behold it is a lot of waiting around and the museum is worth it to go in the off season like if you're ever passing by so like it, if we go to columbus like from charleston everything is three hours from charleston just in life anywhere like timbuktu three hours from charleston pittsburgh three hours from charleston seattle three hours from charleston <laughs> kidding <laughs> right sure um if you ever go uh, it's worth stopping and just like grabbing a bite for lunch and then uh, go into the Mothman Museum. Uh, they have all of these different paraphernalia. You you can buy shirts. I have my shirt on from the Mothman Museum. Um, mm-hmm. It's like Mothman, but it has Batman. Um, it's oh, like there's that lady Batman. with the butt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. I like the lady with the butt. Uh, in general, Mothman has become and you all can probably speak better to this mothman has kind of transcended the store and is now a part of of like culture and memes and is popular with 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 young people and i say that as being a young person but has had a resurgence i guess in the past few years of and it it all started with with these with these moth to the lamp memes that happened uh, a while back um how is my my question to you before we get into the 76 stuff, how has Mothman impacted your life? Uh, uh, he brings me joy. He shows up in my bedroom at night. That's injured cold, Tom, and we all know it. And you're not fooling anybody by telling us Crap. it's Mothman. Crap. Um, we see past here. I, I really don't know that it's impacted my life uh, very much at all. Um, but okay. eh, it's fun. Like, all this stuff is fun. It's fun. I'm glad it's in. A video game and we get to it shows up every so often you know that's cool all right i'm gonna it's called show and tell time and there's me and my wife <laughs> at the mothman statue uh, you look very scared there we are. the wings I are am. so well, extravagant gonna, yeah the wings i'm gonna cool. hold his hand here it's me holding this hand oh i so lost 20 Aww. pounds since then oh he's such a beautiful boy intimate moments with the mothman oh yeah this used to be my profile picture for years and that's a suit that they actually wear at the mothman festival you can go around and uh that looks more like see people wearing mothman yeah i want a mothman suit you can go and volunteer there's people that walk around as the men in black and they <laughs> escort the people in the mothman nice suits. nice <laughs> and then they have a bigfoot suit <laughs> Oh my god. And then Do yourselves a favor and search, 
search Mothman soup and look at the image search. I'm just putting it in chat. There's the point is that the Mothman has become beyond what the original story is. Mothman is now part of like American folk culture. Yes. Um, and is now in like in, in a way has be like cryptids in general have become this very uh, like it's it's weird because normally you would think cryptids and you watch the History Channel and you think it's a bunch of like 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 kind of like crackpots like i'm gonna get in the bunker and get all the weapons and i've gotta put my tinfoil hat on and turn the frogs gay and all this different stuff you know uh <laughs> right <laughs> you've got that aspect of it but then it's a big it's like become a symbol of the um lgbtq plus community oh, interesting. at the same time huh which is which is like in general yeah. It's it's so there's like a duality to this. There's like the people that are like Mothman fans, people that are cryptid fans, I guess, and never the two shall shall realistically meet. Um, so there's like a distance to a point where Mothman yeah. has ascended above Bigfoot <sighs> huh. and beyond. And Mothman transcends us now. That's that's really what I'm trying to say. He's our Lord on is high. That we've gotten to a point. <laughs> yes. And that's why I carry my Bible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's why I, that's why I walk around every day with this in my back pocket, um, and I slap people you who you slap them with I your think, with your Mothman Bible. Need to, need to know that, them on that, the head. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. bad stuff is coming. Bad stuff. All right. Well, thank you, Dave. That was very interesting. Did I pause long enough before saying interesting? Did that work? I, I think so. Okay. I think so. Cool, cool. Well, I appreciate it, man. Um, let's. We've got some stuff to get to in the middle of the show, and then we've got seventy six stuff to get to at the end of the show to talk about how this actually has anything to do with Fallout. So uh, let's tr let's transition. Here we go. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. So welcome to the middle of the show and we are here to thank our patrons. I've been noting that I need to thank the patrons from last month and we've been busy with some other shows and going long lately. But thank you to our new patrons from last month, including uh, Rika and Wessosource Flex and Nicholas B. Thank you guys for being patrons. It's an if you awesome are, name. Yes. <laughs> yeah. If you're interested in supporting the show, then check out patreon.com slash fall lorecast and you can check out all the different tiers, ways of getting the show early or without any ads or being able to join us at the end of every month for our patron chat episode. And this month we will be talking about what were we going to, I pitched an idea and they were like, yeah, that's a good idea. And now I forget Get the idea it has fallen out of my brain crap oh oh we're, we're talking about what it would actually be like if we were in the wasteland ourselves which creatures we would be most um afraid to actually interact with like our own selves in the game like not just role playing a character but like if we were living in the wasteland so we'll be discussing so i'm sure that's going to clarify a little bit as we get closer and closer to the end of the month episode so that's coming up um, so check that out if you're interested in helping support the show and to everyone else who supports the show every month Thank you so much for your support uh, Lainey and I appreciate it We are here because you guys are making this possible. So thank you very very much Also, I have I some appreciate it too and Dave and Dave's here because of it also I have, I've got a number you I guys have been awesome it. this last month um, dropping some reviews um, Because it, it took me so long to get to this episode I'm sure I'm missing some on the list because the uh, my account doesn't show us everything from more than a month ago But I do have some that I can call out including um and i'm gonna mispronounce this g sentan maybe from the united states who writes great for passing time five stars i'm a huge fan of the fallout series but i'm not a huge fan of my job totally understand that so getting to listen to in-depth lore about my favorite games really helps to speed up my days and makes them much more enjoyable so thank you for the amazing content and thank you for giving me something to look forward to when i go to work every day well you're very welcome thank you for that then we have uh let's see we've got um, Psycho Suicide from the United States sounds like a very dangerous name who writes the Fallout podcast I've been waiting for five stars I've looked for a long time for a podcast that I can listen to and I found it 
Well, I'm glad. That's awesome. Man, we're like best podcast. We're like the only one you can listen to. That's amazing. Then we have another one from GoatBoy33, who writes, love the show uh, in the United States. Five stars. Hey, Tom, robots, been hardcore binging the show, and I love it thus far. I really like when you have guests on the show, because I love how you all bounce ideas and opinions off of each other. You should reach out to Oxhorn to see if he's down to make a guest appearance from Texas with much love. Yeah, Oxhorn is an awesome dude. He's very, very, very busy and hard to get a hold of to pin down for this kind of stuff. Um, but I would love to have Oxhorn on the show. So um, who knows? That could very well happen in the future. Uh, Pinky Gems 86 writes from Great Britain. New listener, loving it, five stars. Since lockdown, I've been binging podcasts, and until today, I did not even enter my mind to look for Fallout-related content. So well-researched and presented in an absolute must for Fallout fans, both new and not so new. I've joined the Discord, too, and the community is amazingly friendly. Awesome, Pinky Jim. Thank you for that glowing review and a call-out to the to the Discord and everyone over there. Uh, we've got a few more left, just three more. Um, Vig Boy? Number equals cool. I don't know what that means. Uh, from Sweden, writes, love the show. Five stars founded about a year ago, and I love it. You have such a nice voice. No homo, though. Okay. Well, thank you very much, big boy. Um, then we have uh, JDKS uh, NFN Skaka. I don't know how to pronounce that at all. United from the United States who writes, love this five stars, started binging the show at work, and it has inspired me to start playing all the Fallout games over again and start a new character in 76. Love all the info that is explained in here. Best part of my day. That sounds awesome. Thank you so much. And I'm not going to try to pronounce your name again. And then we have a Garana, Garana, Garina, 29 from the United States who writes, OMG. Five stars. I love your work. Truly awesome and amazing. Please keep up the amazing work. Well, tell you what, we're going to keep going. So thank you for that review. Guys, uh, I appreciate everyone who takes time to drop a review on whatever podcatcher you're listening to. It really does help to promote the show, make sure people understand that the show is continually putting out good content and uh, it makes it makes me feel good, too. So I, I appreciate that. Um, also, before we get back to the rest of the episode, we noted this at the beginning of the show, Starfield Lorecast is going to be a thing. It is not necessarily going to be a weekly thing. It'll be something that Dave and I will be dishing out every month or so until we start to get more and more details coming in. And then it will it'll transition from being something like a speculation show to an actual information that we're getting about the game and the world and the background of the world and all that stuff. So uh, that podcast is going to be awesome because I'm sure Bethesda is going to do an awesome job with the world as they always do with RPGs. And they better. They, and, they, and they better. Um, and if they don't, then we'll we'll still do a show, and we'll just have to figure out what to say about uh, it. <laughs> we're gonna burn it down. We'll we're gonna burn it down if they don't burn it down. Um, so yeah, so that that's something for you guys to look up. So if you are an audio listener, um, and by the time you're listening to this, search for Starfield Lorecast. Hopefully, it'll be out. It may take a little while to get onto Apple Podcasts. That's, that's the one that takes the longest to get onto. But we'll we'll give you some reminders in the upcoming weeks to go check it out. Also, this show. And all the other shows on the Robots Radio Network are sponsored by our network sponsors, including audiobooks.com. And I've been I've been talking about audiobooks.com on all of my shows lately because I think it's probably our best deal. If you look in the show notes, you'll see a bunch of different deals, things for like Loot Crate and Gamefly and Green Man Gaming and NordVPN. Audiobooks.com is giving away three books. All you have to do is click the link and sign up and you get three books for free absolutely free so if you wanted to look up mothman prophecies i bet that's on there why don't we do that real quick audiobooks.com mothman prophecies or anything else at all you i mean you just get three free uh audiobooks mothman let's see if this is in here mothman prophecies uh wonder wild and wonderful and paranormal the perhaps nots about monsters it's like a kid's book and then some other book that has nothing to do with Mothman. Mothman. But the Mothman Prophecies, John A. Keel, is available. So if you want to listen to the wackiness that we just talked about, you can do it absolutely for, for free. It's only one credit. And this includes even two VIP credits. So basically any books that you want to get at all for the first month are absolutely free. And then after that, you can, you can continue and sign up or not. That's totally up to you. So super great deal. All right, guys. Let's get into Fallout 76 and what Mothman's doing there. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. So, Dave, you and I have been playing Fallout 76 since beta, maybe even pre-beta, 
Since, since early. time since, immemorial. So yeah, I mean, we basically invented the game. You can blame us for all of the launch we, problems. We didn't. I was here in the alpha beta game of Delta stage. <laughs> the alpha beta game of Delta stage. So we've been doing this for a while. Um, Lainey is very new to the game. She's been she's been playing it for the last three weeks. I don't think you've come across a Mothman yet, have you? No, I still no cryptids. I'm still no waiting. cryptids at all yet. Took not a single one. Wow. She's, she's, but I also, it'll happen. I'm only yeah. level 15. Like, I'm, yeah. it's going to be a while. It'll happen. You'll, you'll come across one of these guys. So in the game, the Mothman just kind of shows up. And there's a number of different Mothmen that you could run across with different colored eyes and different names. Dave, what's, what's your experience? Experience? Experiments? Maybe? Experience, probably, with... The experiments? What are my experiments? <laughs> well, Tom, <laughs> sodium chloride is a great element. <laughs> That's all. Uh, my my experience with Mothman, I didn't see him in the game until I was probably upper level. So it took me several hours, like uh, like hours into like ten or twenty hours before I actually saw Mothman. Fine. Mm-hmm. There's some interesting things in the game, and I've and I've now caught on to them that they had started to say I, before that was released, where they have put certain things, certain lights, um, certain yeah, uh, yes, yes, uh, like street lights or certain glowing plants that are aligned so they look like eyes uh-huh, that yeah. are the right shape and size of Mothman, so you think. Yes, it's Mothman. And at a distance, um, you're like, wait, are those two? Oh, those aren't two eyes. Like, and this happened to me. This very thing. And and thank you for reminding me about this because I forgot. Before I ran into a Mothman in game, that that very thing happened like two or three times because we knew Mothman was in the game. We saw screenshots. People were sharing stuff, saying, "Look, Mothman's here. Look at the red eyes." And there were a few instances of like, "Oh crap, those two red eyes!" And then, no, wait, those are just street lights. Or oh, that's oh, those are just lights in a window. Yep. It's very true, and it's and it's funny. The, the The first one that I that I noticed was actually it ended up being like random events happen. One of the random events, um, for, I think, cryptid is there's like a, a spreadsheet list where they roll through, and if you get to an area, it spawns a random event. Um, one of them is Mothman, and it was the first area that I saw a uh, one of those like fake outs. So it was like you could see a fake out mm-hmm. or the Mothman in that same area, um, which is I think you can go to the there's a bunker that is uh it's at the top of the map towards more towards the red rocket gas station in the north there's a a, a bunker and i think it's ella ames is the, the person that the bunker's at it's right okay. outside her door if you just like pop right outside of ella ames door and you're like hey is mothman here you're gonna see like these two little plants and you'll find them because you'll notice be like those two are like they're they're at the right distance apart that something, mm-hmm. they're trying to say something here um so Later on, I think it was in the Cranberry Glade. Uh, they have these um, these giant plants that are down there, the, the, the carnivorous plants that have grown over the... Um, I forgot the name of them. It's funny because I, I did like a dissertation on these plants and I've forgotten the name. That's oh. how history and time work. Right, um, right. Sundrew. Sundrew. You go to the Sundrew Grove and I was going down there picking cranberries. Like I'm, I'm just telling the story like I'm a little red riding hood. As you do. Um, I was going down there picking cranberries for my grandmother's cranberry pie in the middle of it. All of a sudden I see this weird thing and it's all red and it's all like gross and I'm like what the f- is this? So hmm. I see I see this thing and the name pops up and it says Scorched Mothman. This is the first Mothman I've seen and it is Scorched. And I'm like, what the heck? Really? They can do like Yeah. They can do this? That's they like, can Scorch that's a like Mothman? Double rare. Like you can get a scorched yeah. for pretty much any of the cryptids, yeah. Yeah, they're scorched for for almost everything. Um, as far as I'm aware, and diseased. Yeah, um, and it killed me. And that's killed, how the story ended. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. First time I ran into a Mothman, I uh, was playing with my wife. My wife and I were uh, were playing together, and she was a much lower character. And we were traveling across the map uh, in a kind of the mountainous hilly region uh, on the like the east side of the middle of the map, right? I don't remember where we were going. Mm. We're heading uh, up a hill, and all of a sudden, I hear behind me, and I turn around, and I'm like, what was that? And then I see out of the corner of the the screen, and I was like, "Uh, something's following us, and we both stop and turn around, and sure enough, like right next to me, and it was a a wise mothman, and it was like with the purple eyes, right? And 
And I was like, ah, it's a Mothman! So I start shooting at it. Of course, the wise Mothman's the nice one. It doesn't attack you. It's the nice one, yeah. It's the nice one. So we obliterated this poor wise Mothman <laughs> because it freaked us out because it was doing the whole thoof, thoof thing and like trailing us. Yeah, poor wise Mothman was killed. That's that's sacrilege, and I'll have you know that I'm gonna beat you with this. After. You're gonna get a bonk. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, the internet is now mad at me. They're like, "No, he's the nice one, mm. you murderer." Nekomata yeah. seventy mm-hmm. Nekomata seventy six says that you're a murderer, and mm-hmm. I happen to agree. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Mothman Ranger says you're a monster. This is I officially didn't know, the trial guys. Of Tom Blair. This is before I knew. I didn't oh. know. This is very early. This is very very early. This is before people like yeah. were just like, oh, here's all the stuff we know about 76. I was just like, ah, Mothman, shoot it, shoot it. It's it's creeping us. It's creeping on us. Yeah, that was the first one. So so what else do we know about the Mothman in the game? You guys have any other thoughts? Any other experiences? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so the Mothman in the game seems to be less uh, man. Uh, seems to be more moth. Uh, seems mm-hmm. to be more like a lot of the different cryptids is kind of the fall take on it, where it's been kind of uh, mutated. Seems like a gigantic mutated moth. Um, yeah. But uh, even that, there's some some odd some there's some odd stuff going on there because they have you know of course the cult of Mothman, uh, which they had originally in the base game, but now it's kind of it's expanded more flushed on. out as a whole yeah. different enemy type. Um, right. The the interesting thing is if you go into the uh, where the game and you go in the basement, there are um, that's kind of the first place that you'd find stuff about the cult of Mothman, and they have certain sermons um, down there. And in mm-hmm. the game's lore, it details that the Mothman appeared to people uh, before the flood in Charleston, uh, which is was caused by the raiders there. They let off a nuke in, in the dam, Somersville Dam, and that's right. why that's broken. And it's post, um, post-Great post War. Mothman appeared. So, post-Great War. Yes, yeah, post-Great War. Right. It appeared to them, and it told them to get onto the rooftops because there was a hmm. flood, and they were like... Well, I don't think it told them to get on the rooftops. I think that's just the action they took because they misinterpreted it, right? So it told them there'd be a flood... True. And then Brother Charles is the character that heard this. And then he was like, everybody, like, tomorrow we gotta stay safe. And then, of course, it was not a flood in the traditional sense. Yeah. Interesting. I'm trying to think. I'm pretty sure that they warned them about the, the like, the cultists were warned about the flood in Charleston. Though, yeah. Before. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that that's what they were, but they, it was just a flood. It was misinterpreted as like a, a water flood. Mm, okay. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so the, you can read through the sermons in, in, in the, um, in the bottom of it, uh, of the, of the Mothman museum where there's like a bunch of cultist stuff. And then you can read about Jeff Lane, who is the owner of the Mothman museum. Fun fact, the actual owner of the Mothman museum's name is Jeff as well. <laughs> current current day that's interesting yeah yeah, yeah current yeah. day uh it, it's definitely it's definitely a nod uh to him because he's pretty he's pretty active uh he's like an active member of the community um so it details the story of jeff who was big into mothman opened up the mothman museum because mothman was a thing before the bombs dropped um very similar story uh you can pick it up in the holotape the tales of west virginia hills it'll tell you one of them's mothman it'll tell you about the Scarberries, I think, is the name of the family. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's if you read about Jeff Lane. No. Oh, go ahead. No, 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 no. Keep talking. Oh, uh, just J- Jeff Lane. You start to learn about, and you're like, okay, like this dude's really in the moth man. He's uh, leaves on some mission, and you really don't hear about him for a long time if you're going through the the normal progression of exploring locations within the game. So I guess later on, you approach this place called the Lucky Hole Mine, and you start to get these uh, these notes uh, from Bop and cultists who are talking about praising uh, a certain a certain thing. They're like praise him, praise this, praise that, uh, and you get these holotapes from Jeff Lane talking about searching for the interloper, and he says that he is he has found the interloper, and the interloper has called him there, and the holotape ends, and there's no body for mm. jeff lane like you, you don't find jeff lane's body you just find these these old holotapes but in the lucky hole mine a lot of the people that are big into the 
I guess, overarching theory of, especially in the later in Fallout 4 and now 76, of these um, Lovecraftian creatures that keep appearing. Yeah. Um, and there's definitely a Lovecraftian creature in the Lucky Hole mine that he calls the Interloper. The Interloper. I can't wait. Have you all seen the Interloper? Seen anything relative to the like weird Lovecraftian stuff going on in this? Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, we've we've talked about this on the Fallout Hub a little bit. Um, the Interloper, dude. Yeah, we need to do a whole episode on like Lovecraftian connections in Fallout. This needs to be something that we do. Maybe we talk tackle this next week. But um, sure. Yeah, yeah, cool stuff. Um. But yeah, I don't want to go too far off the Mothman unless you have a way of, are you planning to pull this back around? No, that's kind of where Jeff Lane into okay. the story um, okay. and, and how, what is the Mothman cult? Like what, my question, I guess that I'm hearing, why does, why does Mothman have a cult? What is the purpose of the cult? What is, what's their dealio, man? You yeah. Know? What's their dealio? Man? What's up with them? I don't know. As I, far as I'm aware, they like, Right, so this idea in real life is that the Mothman prophesizes things. He lets you know when bad things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. I think that the cultists caught onto this in the Fallout world universe um, because they would try to summon them to get information. It's how they found out about the nukes. Like, this was normal for them to be calling on these Mothmen and multiple of them, right? They knew that there was different ones because they could talk to them. Um... And it's interesting that the Mothmen do look so much like moths as they do in the games, because it does lead you to believe that they are mutated from something like you mentioned. But clearly they're not. Clearly they're some sort of supernatural force, if not genuinely some sort of deity. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. My question question is, okay, so if Mothman, you have these Mothman... Mothmen. Is that what you call them? I want to call them Mothmen. Mothmans. They're all the Let's different moth mans. creatures. The, the Mothmans. <laughs> the, the, the Mothmans. The glowing, the scorch, the, you know, across yeah. the border. They're, they're, across, well, the, the whole gambit. Yeah, go ahead. I, I want to go into... Moth- I want to list them all out in a second, but go ahead. Keep talking. Okay, go, no, you go ahead. You um, go ahead. Okay, list, so, list out the mo- so tell me about the moth boys. Yeah, yeah. So we've got we've got a few different mothmans. We've got just the regular mothman. We've got the stalking mothman, the vengeful mothman, the glowing mothman, the scorched mothman, and the wise mothman. And um, the eye color is actually not specific to the type of mothman. It's actually um, based on their current uh, state and response to you so the wise man wise wise moth man being passive has purple eyes because purple eyes mean passive um it's not that all wise moth man only have purple eyes it's that any moth man in the passive state has purple eyes um they uh they change colors from um purple to uh let me see where did i find this um purple for passive yellow for cautious and then red for hostile um, the glowing variant has green eyes and they don't change based on their their current state um, and each of the different mothmen mothmans have slightly different stats um, abilities and uh, items that they can drop so there is some variation between them but they are distinct and different from each other in more than just you know their eyes which isn't really a distinction except for the green one so interesting stuff yeah my my question is you have all these mothmen mothmans but in the game you have th- there's no like actual man slash moth like it's just mainly just mutated moth but there is the statue um in point pleasant that is much similar to the real world statue so my question is is there like is it kind of like Lord of the Rings, where there's like we made many Mothmen, but there's one Mothman to rule them all, uh, and he looks like a uh, silvery hunk of a thing, <laughs> or he's like yeah, the great hunk. Mothman who is like the, the you know the the one that they all descend from and worship or something. Um, I have a very right. similar theory about the bunnies that live uh, in the field nearby our house. Um, during the summer like spring summer and fall months they come out and you can see them like on the edges of the high grass as you it's like the big it's like a big uh round area 
that you can we can ride our bikes around it's probably a, a few acres large mm-hmm. right um and there's kind of swampy area in the middle lots of tall grass all the bunnies kind of live in the tall grass uh but in the winter they disappear they don't come out as much and it's because uh, my head canon for this is that they all worship the the great the great fat bun who th- during the spring summer and fall months they all collect grass for and feed and make them really big and fat so that they can cuddle up with them and hibernate during the winter in order to stay warm maybe that's what we've got going on here with the mothman mans yeah i wonder if there's like a moth cave and like the <laughs> mothman is sitting in the cave and like as you walk in there's just like all glowing eyes that you see as you as yeah. you enter yeah and all the, the all the other cave. mothmans are all like bowing in worship and fluttering their wings and there's like the, the <laughs> great the great mothman who's like towering like huge in the back of the cave you know and you're like how did you even get in this cave the opening's not that big but he's he's back there and he's the one that's telepathic and, and warns people of floods yeah so what's his, what's his agenda do you what do you think is the agenda he has an agenda clearly clearly um it's he's like a daedra from the elder scrolls games in that he only exists when people worship him so he's gathering worship juice that's an interesting take (laughs) yeah i I mean people people laughed at me when i said that they're gonna do they're gonna pull in a, a a system like eso plus for fallout 76 and make like uh-huh. A, a premium subscription and you get special items sure and enough, it storage. people were like oh that's funny so everyone that's you know listening at home thinking oh ha ha tom your danger theory let me tell you something there are some connections going maybe, on in here maybe maybe these cryptids only exist because we believe that they exist mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that reminds me of the end of Merlin when you have Queen Mab and everybody is like and this is how I wish we could do with a lot of the corrupt political figures in the world is everybody looks at everybody looks at queen mab and they say queen mab we're gonna forget you and they all turn around and they don't look at her and she's screaming and then no. like slowly she disappears uh, into the ether because everyone they, forgot they forget. you can't make yourself forget that's the, that's the, there's a plot hole there you can't make yourself forget things like that doesn't work the more you think it's about trying Berlin, to forget man. something, Come the more on. you remember a thing. Anyway, all right. Well, I think we've kind of hit. I think we've hit all the high notes on this one. Um, <laughs> Dave, you have any? Dave Laney, anything else what to, a to wild close this episode out? You got this is here. this has been an absolutely <laughs> ridiculous episode. It's been super fun. Um, do you guys have any anything else to close us out with before we go? Uh, I'm doing a, another podcast. Uh, I've got Starfield Lorecast that's coming out. I do the Fallout Hub with Tom. Um, I am doing this episode of Fallout Lorecast with Tom. Uh, it's a Surprise. pleasure to have, pleasure to be here. Pleasure for you to have me on. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm glad that I could ramble on about Mothman. I feel like there's only one way to learn about Mothman. It's by somebody rambling at you about him Ramble for a few on. hours until you're finally, finally done. Uh, I do uh, my own personal podcast called Geography Arcade. Uh, most recently, I've got an episode out uh, talking about Elder Scrolls Morrowind. There's stuff about Star Wars. There's stuff about uh, a number of different episodes. I, I can't even remember what all I've done. I think I did a Fallout episode, maybe a Fallout 76 episode. Who knows? Who even knows? Until at this you point. find it. It's called, called Geography Arcade, and it studies uh, about the worlds of our favorite video games and how it relates to our world and just like the love that we, that we all share for all of those things. Mm-hmm. What, a, what a pitch that is yeah the I'm, love I'm that done. we all share oh baby i don't know where that was going with that laney what do you have going on i like all these singing every time I you mean, and i do a show together we podcast, end up singing about stuff much. no yeah no you don't have to talk about podcasts anything else anything else going <laughs> on anything you want people to know about how to get re- how to reach out to you i mean you know i'm on the discord uh it says laney you can find me um, other than that, I mean, not really. I do lots of things that have nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Me too. You're welcome to share any of that if you want people to be involved with it, because some of our community might be interested. But it's up to you. I am. I am developing an online course about how to develop online courses because I've been working in the creation of online courses, mostly about computer science since 2017. Um, wow. so finally we're creating one that is actually just so people can learn to do it themselves. Uh, very exciting. So if anybody has an online course they'd like to make, this should be available in the next year or so. Very cool. All right. Well, yeah. you guys know how to get a hold of her if you wanted to 
to chat with the, with Lainey about that. Awesome. Well, you guys know how to get a hold of me. Um, also, after this show, after this episode is done, uh, if you have any questions about content creation, podcasts, videos, streaming, marketing, technology, to do any of those things, um, I'll be hanging out for a bit to chat with the community for office hours. I do this after our shows on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays. So feel free to chat. Feel free to hang out. Bring Come up some, you know, if you got some questions, go ahead and start uh, prepping them for the uh for the chat there and i will answer those in just a few minutes um other than that tune in tomorrow or on whatever podcatcher for the starfield Lorecast uh with me and dave and the fallout hub and all the other cool stuff we're doing on the network robots radios dot robots radio singular dot net um is where you can get all of that stuff so thank you guys for joining me this week and we'll be back next week with another cryptid creepy something to talk about for this month so stay tuned for that all right guys well until then stay safe and if you happen to see two glowing eyes in the distance or a suited man in your bedroom let us know that should be the first response don't don't seek help no don't Don't But maybe if you see a suited man in your bedroom you should let the police know first no 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 pull out your phone or google sleep paralysis open up twitter or discord Discord. (laughs) and then send us a note take a picture say hold on suited man take a picture send us a thing and then call the police okay no but really like real life actual if you really do this does really happen in real life please call the police call the police all right we will see you guys next week bye (laughs) To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. This podcast was brought to you in part by our patrons at patreon.com slash falloutlorecast, including our tier five patrons. Thank you so much to Wessasaurus Flex and Firewriter for supporting the show. Also, if you're interested in business inquiries, advertising on the show, or applying to be a podcast on the robots radio network send me a message at falloutlorecast at gmail.com or robots network at gmail.com you've been listening to a robots radio podcast smart shows for interesting people check out all the shows at robotsradio.net